Hey everybody, this is Ben Hansen with MinMax, and here's a quick summary of Chrono Trigger, but really, you should just go play this game on your own. Just go do that, please. The game starts out so simple and so sweet. It's just a kid named Chrono excited to go to a fair. So Chrono wakes up, gets out of bed, doesn't drag a comb across his head. Here's Marl, don't worry, she's not dead. And she grows on you. The fair's pretty cool, but pay attention. The game does an amazing job of foreshadowing and connecting back to itself. Your friend Luca created the teleporter from the fly, basically, and Chrono has zero hesitation to help show it off. Marl disappears, Chrono has zero hesitation to follow her. He's just a good kid, who also has amazing sword skills that aren't ever really explained. So now you're in 600 AD and you meet a sword-wielding frog, uh, I forget his name. Your girl Marl disappears in the most chilling way possible. Chrono Trigger's time travel rules are back to the future rules, but it's also the looper rule of just have fun and don't think too much about it. It's saying that Avengers Endgame is bullshit. So you basically make everything right between Marl and her ancestors, but in your timeline everything isn't quite right and the justice system is all out of whack and you're put on trial and it turns out the game recorded and remembered every single thing you've ever done. It's kind of the Alexa of its day. Of course, you escape from the cruel justice system of the present by blowing up its robot dragon, and you jump ahead to the year 2300, which should be glorious! It's not glorious! You basically meet the survivors in the desert of the real. They're constantly starving to death, but they can't die thanks to this handy innertron, so that's cool. Look, this section is weird, but it's short. We thought it looked cool at the time. You repair your new best bud Robo, and it turns out that the reason humans are starving and robots are bullies from 80s films is something called Lavos partied like it was 1999 and destroyed the planet. So here's the new big picture goal for the game. Stop this thing called Lavos. And because time travel is weird, you meet a creepy old man at what's called the end of time, which becomes your trippy home away from home. So you go back to your time thanks to a portal in some fiend's cupboard, somehow they don't mind. It turns out they're all more focused on worshipping the fiend lord, whose name is Magus, and he's from the year 600. You know Sephiroth's sword, the Masamune? It turns out it's comprised of two boys. I'm sorry, uh, two ancient freaks. You want to give the sword to Frog, but it's broken and needs some redstone to repair, something that hasn't been around for millions of years. So you're out of luck. That's the end. Wait, no, time travel, let's go! You go back to 65 million BC, you know, before Chrono? And you meet a wild woman named Ayla that drinks and flirts and punches and speaks slightly worse English, because that's how language works. Oh okay, yeah, we should mention that throughout all of this, there's a lot of battling happening everywhere. Uh, reptites hate lightning. So you get the redstone, this blacksmith named Melchior from the fair fixes the Masamune, runs it over to Frog, and he kinda needs to unpack things a bit emotionally before he grabs it because he's a better being than this world deserves. So you see his best buddy Cyrus use the sword to try and defeat Magus. It didn't go well. Magus and his goon landed a devastating blow on Cyrus and then burned him alive and then turned Glenn into a frog. So Frog emotionally rallies and cuts a damn mountain in half to lead to Magus's sincerely scary castle. The music and vibe of this place is unnerving. And they love Donkey Kong here. Spooky Donkey Kong. You confront Magus's henchmen, Ozzy, Slash, and Flea. Rock on. Flea is uh, kind of a challenging one to talk about now. You stop Magus from activating Lavos, but he claims that he was actually deactivating it. That's a dumb reference. So reality breaks down. Marl freaks us out, and then suddenly we're back with Ayla picking up some sweet pterodactyls. So Azela, who's the leader of the reptites, basically just dinosaurs, gets killed. And with all things in Chrono Trigger, it's revealed that the enemy really wasn't that bad. They're just getting by, man. We can pivot our hatred to Lavos and just blame him for everything over and over and over again. So Lavos crashes into the planet, causes the Ice Age, he's the scrat of his day, and in 12,000 BC you discover society split between the scummy Earthbound, which is what they actually call it, and the mythical kingdom of Zeal. The Queen of Zeal is obsessed with harnessing Lavos' power with something called the Mammon Machine? She's the golem of the bunch, really. Then there's her daughter Shala, look up her wiki, I dare you. And her son Janus, who's kind of an anus. And they're all obsessed with this mysterious prophet as well. I bet you can't guess who he is. But he kicks you out of zeal and locks the door behind you. So you get back at him by going to the future, which again is not very cool. And you get a time machine that you get to name that was created by a guru who was actually kicked out of zeal. The other gurus, by the way, are Melchior the Blacksmith and uh, the Trenchcoat Flasher from the end of time. So the zeal folks have an ocean palace where they summon Lavos. Magus gets his hot topic ass kicked, and Chrono, the good kid that he is, tries to stab Lavos right in his little butthole beak, and it doesn't really go well. Chrono is dead. For real, and certainly forever. The past and future still suck, and then there's this guy named Dalton who's really only significant because he's the only character lucky enough to apparently hear Mitsuda's Chrono Trigger soundtrack. Oh, the prophet was Magus, by the way. He got blasted back in time. Then you can recruit Magus by showing him mercy, which, you know, I guess you can do that. And we should definitely point out that this is just one path you can take through the game. From here on out, the timelines get really complicated. There's a lot of different options you can take here. So everybody agrees that Chrono was a really good kid that should be alive, so you're sent back to the fair to a tent run by Norstein Beckler, who I think Ted Danson played at some point. Anyways, the point is you want a real life-size doll that looks exactly like Chrono. You end up using a time egg, arbitrarily known as Chrono Trigger, because otherwise the title wouldn't make any sense, to pull a sloppy fast one on the concept of time itself. Swapping in the sex doll at 
the exact moment Chrono died, which apparently saves him. It's silly, but there's a really sweet reunion scene, so who cares? Now it's Side Quest City, with a cat killing Ozzy, Robo creating a forest for 400 years, Frog talking to ghosts, Robo's gender stereotype girlfriend, Marl kicking some chancellor's ass, this Luca quest, which is too f***ed up to even joke about. Now you're brimming with power and ready to take on Lavos. But first, you can walk through Queen Zeal's collection of your clones? Uh, no clue. Oh, and Chrono Trigger's bosses love two things. Subtly forcing you to lose to progress the story, which is the number one RPG sin, and having a boatload of forms. This is Lavos. But this is the real Lavos. But this is the real Lavos. But this is the real Lavos. Kill it, boom, he's gone. So there are 13 different endings, and there's even more confusing stuff in an animated ending they added later. But in the big ending, there's fireworks for Joseph, and it turns out it's not a game about sympathy for your enemies and nostalgia overall. It was actually about how you forgot to feed your cat the entire time. That's it. Too breezy for you? We missed some things? We actually just wrapped up a gigantic game club discussion fueled by the MinMax community, and it's the best, most thorough discussion of Chrono Trigger on the internet. I swear to God, it's called The Deepest Dive. Honestly, prove us wrong. Find us a better one. The Deepest Dive is on MinMax's YouTube channel, or you can listen to the full six-hour discussion as a podcast by supporting us at patreon.com slash minmax. And of course, there's two ends. If you like what we're doing, please help support us. Thanks so much, everybody. From in-depth game club discussions with the community to live streams every single week, weekly podcasts, exclusive videos, everything under the sun is at patreon.com slash minmax2ends. Check it out, everybody.